As part of measures to cope the deadly coronavirus, the Yobe State Government has officially announced the closure of state's boundaries and directed tricycle operators not to convey more than two passengers at a time. The directives were issued after the inspection of the state isolation center and procured equipment specialist hospital. Michael Oshoma has details in this report. This rapid spread of the coronavirus within Nigeria is a source of worry to states yet to record a single case. It has prompted many state governments to partially lock down the state, restricting movement and in some cases even locking down or entry points. Yobe state government is now taking some decisive measures to keep its citizens safe. In our own case, in the first, this is the in our life. We don't know those of 70 and a whole years who they have witnessed such kind of disaster, but for our own generations of 65 downward, I think, is the worst. You know what you were experiencing this kind of disease globally. Even the superpowers are crying, so blessed of me, and then we don't come to this as we are. So the only thing is, the we do our best and set for our last intervention. All workers uh, in the employ of the Abbey State Government uh, from level 12 downward should work from home, except workers in the water supply and sanitation sector, healthcare sector, state emergency management agency, and fire service. Those are essential services that should continue to report to work. All other workers from level 12 down should work from home. The State Minister of Health um, has been mandated by His Excellency Honorable Balabuni to remain proactive and take all measures um, to prepare just in case. We are not praying and we don't hope that it will happen, but then just in case it does, um, we have also put in some preparedness uh, measures. As part of measures to support the state government, the Nigerian service of the Civil Defense Corps also took to the markets, motor parks, and social places to sensitize residents on the danger the virus poses. The thing I'm doing in, the, in, the, in, in that two township here is being done in all the 17 local governments across the United State because we have replicated the same committee that I set up. There are 250 men in this committee. Most of them are paramedics. They are the medical depart, uh, unit of the disaster and crisis management. So you see them all are here. So apart from the fact that we create enlightenment, we are going to create a stand in all these public places to ensure that uh, people uh, observe the sanitary, uh, sanitary uh, precautions. So on Sunday, we'll be in the churches. Today, when you go to the central mosque now, you show us uh, and some other mosques around the town. The NSCDC Yobe commandant noted that worship centers who do not comply with government directives would be dealt with accordingly. In Dabatu and uh, even the central mosque, you see officers stand by. So on Sunday, we make sure that services are uh, conducted within the limit that the, uh, the government has set. Even though Yobe State hasn't recorded any case relating to coronavirus, residents and stakeholders are calling on the state government to impose a short down directive on markets, social gathering and worship centers across the states. Residents are taken seriously to observing personal hygiene in order to avert contracting the deadly coronavirus. Government is also playing its role by procuring equipment and readiness in case its states record a positive case. Governor Meima Alabuni and all the top government dignitaries visited the isolation center that has been set up to see for himself the level of preparedness. I'm impressed with the precautionary measures of our people. And uh, from the Laiyo State here, we don't have a single reported case of the COVID-19. The governor's aides explain why there is now need to take more restrictive measures. The Yobe State government has already announced the closure of the state's borders with neighboring states and with neighboring Niger Republic from t Tuesday, 31st March 2020 from 12 midnight. The committee resolves that henceforth commercial tricycle operators are only to carry a maximum of two passengers at a time while commercial vehicles will carry a maximum of four people including the driver.
This is just a, a, a temporary measure that we feel will help uh, with the social distancing uh, aspect that we'll be emphasizing. Because if we ask people to maintain social distances, distancing uh, 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 in their normal uh, 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 social meals, and then when they, when they travel in a commercial car, they are crowded in, in a car, I don't think that social distancing has been observed as well as it should. Markets, religious and social gatherings are still to remain open as the government does not want to escalate the hardship residents are already confronted with because of the insurgency. Prayer remains the important weapon against any known and unknown pandemic. Uh, like you all know, your base state, we are fighting two battles. We are fighting the insurgency and at the same time, uh, fighting the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we should be sit first in our prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah protect us. We are happy that we don't have single reported case in Yobe state and we should try to remain safe and prayerful. The Yobe state government appreciates the people of the state for their steadfast compliance with the recommendations earlier made by the committee. The state government recognizes that such compliance is absolutely necessary in ensuring that the state remains free from the coronavirus disease. All these measures are observed for an initial period of two weeks. But the, the, this, this period is subject to review by the committee. And uh, upon review, the committee will look at what is, uh, what is best for the state, what is best for the people, and will uh, adopt that measure going forward. So for now, uh, the borders of the state are closed by an initial period of two weeks, but before the, the expiry, uh, expiration of the two weeks period, we will look at uh, the measures, how effective they are, and whether additional measures are needed. So, you know, this is uh, a, a, a moving target. You know, normally the disease itself, the virus itself, will, will lead the way, right? It depends on how it, how it happens. You know, so nobody can say anything as to what is definite. But for now, we will continue to take the measures that are necessary and that are appropriate to ensure that we keep an outbreak from taking root here in UBC and to ensure that all the people of this are safe. This is the interview segment on Impact UB. Our guest is the Honorable Commissioner for Women Affairs in the state, Hajia Hawa Ba Abubakar. Welcome to the program, Ma. Thank you very much. Yes, we're talking about women now, but let's start with women empowerment. How well empowered are women in Yobe City? What plans and programs has um, the government put in place to ensure that women are empowered? Uh, I will start by telling you that no nation in the world can develop and progress without the contribution of women in the development processes. Therefore, it is key that every government should focus and target the women because of the large population of women that we have. Uh, therefore, uh, the issues of women development and economic empowerment has been the priority, one of the priorities of His Excellency, uh, the Executive Governor of Yobe State, Honorable Maimala Buni, since his accession of this mantle of leadership, he has focused his attention particularly on women who are very vulnerable, the widows and the orphan children. Therefore, uh, he has put in line so many programs that are aimed at uplifting the lives and well-being of women in this state. Among which I can tell you that uh, we are working towards the provision of cash assistance for income generating activities. He has also earmarked large sum of money for empowering women through the provision of small ruminants for breeding and fattening, which is considered as one of the most viable projects that has been sustainable and attainable in the past. And uh, also, he has also approved for the provision of a, um, cash support also for the women entrepreneurs, women in small businesses. He intends to 
expand and strengthen their businesses so that the businesses will be strong and be able to support their families. We also have a Women Development Center. This Women Development Center is supposed to offer skill acquisition and training programs for women as well as young and adolescent girls that are out of school or those that dropped out from schools, particularly those that left the school as a result of the Boko Haram insurgency. Uh, you can remember the Dapchi girls' abduction. It's made so many parents to withdraw their children from school out of fear of the Boko Haram abduction. And we've been struggling with this because those girls in Dapchi have been taken back into schools. They have been integrated back into other schools. The school is now fully functional, but the impact of that singular action has really affected some parents towards sending their children, uh, especially the girl child, uh, to school. So the teeming number of girls on the street that are hawking, that the government has made a very, very big plan to integrate them into uh, women development centers to acquire skills and be self-reliant. Okay, well, let's talk about um, women's rights because you know women are often considered as um, the as part of the vulnerable group in the society. How enlightened are women in Yoruba State about um, their rights? Uh, women rights. Uh, I will tell you that Yobe is an Islamic state. The greater population are Muslims, and in Islam women enjoy very, very considerable rights, more than the men. Therefore, women have not been dry, denied their rights. Women can inherit. Women can be under their, their, their relations, but still inherit the, uh, from their husbands. Women are being taken care of by their families. I don't think we have, we, they are not under any form of uh, discrimination or molestation or hardship when husbands die. There is nothing associated to discrimination of women or violence regarding uh, women when they lo lose their husbands. Yes. 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 We enjoy considerable rights under the Islamic tenets of, uh, yes. And gender-based violence is another issue that uh, I think it's a global issue and even in Nigeria there is a growing advocacy to tackle um, this problem. How is it being tackled in Yobe State because of the issues where women in all over the country are subjected to this kind of a violence? Thank you very much. Uh, like you said globally, anywhere where there is crisis, women suffer most. Women suffer because sometimes they use sexual violence as a form of warfare yeah. to break the men as well as the women to subdue or taken under their power. So gender-based violence is considered as a, maybe a warfare by the insurgents, but uh, the government of Yobe State has been working very, very hard. The civil society organizations, the Ministry of uh, Women Affairs, were able to come out with a state action plan for the implementation of uh, security, United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 and is being domesticated in Yobe State where the girl child is being protected and perpetrators are being uh, prosecuted. But uh, I would also like to tell you that the government has approved the minister, under the Ministry of Justice to review the, 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 the punishment for rape. And now in Yobe State, if somebody rapes a girl uh, under the age of 18, that is a minor, he's going to have life imprisonment without option of fine. And if he rapes a girl or a woman, from the age of 18 upwards, he's going to have 25 years in prison without any option of fine. But the problem is that getting the, the evidence, getting the facts, getting the exhibit to 
to haul the perpetrator is very, very minimal now. But at the moment, the government has put in a very stringent measures and it has gone to reduce the number of cases that we are experiencing in, in Yobe State, especially from 2019 to date, with the law that has been put in place. And that is also uh, with the help of some NGOs like UNFPA, UNHCR and the rest, and uh, this um, managing conflict in northeastern Nigeria, the, they are put up a referral center, a referral center where uh, the girl can report. In fact, there is a referral pathway from the police to the hospital, from the hospital then to the court. And I'm telling you that the number of cases is reducing. Only that uh, catching the, the, the perpetrator is difficult due to the fact that there is still, we still experience the culture of silence by the uh, survivors' uh, families. You know, it's sometimes in some places they consider it as a taboo. If you report this case, you may not be able to get a husband or something. But nevertheless, however, the government is trying very, very hard to educate and sensitize the parents to be reporting these cases so that the perpetrators will be held to justice. Okay, ma. Uh, there's, Nigeria is also a signature to the 35 percent um, affirmative action mm -hmm. that um, encourages women to participate in politics and give women a voice. In your message, what's the situation? Uh, how are women being encouraged to come out, run for office, get into government, and just break that glass ceiling? Yeah. Uh, politics is a matter of interest. There is no woman that has been denied the right to come up and say she wants to buy for a political position. Women are given the chance. It is left for us to take that chance and also uh, go into politics with the aim of uh, getting a position, political position or uh, any office. So women have been sensitized with regards to their rights into politics. They've been participating, they've been voting. In fact, more women vote than men in Yobe State. I'm assuring you this. Since 2003, women have been voting in large number, more than the men. So this is a clear indication that they know that they are supposed to uh, vote. They know their civic right. But the only thing is that women are still coming up behind the men into politics. We are supporting them strongly and we are being able to get some benefits out of it. Okay, but how do you break um, that culture of silence that you talked about earlier? Because in most cases you said they are afraid of stigmatization. Some of them suffer from different kind of ailments that mm -hmm. if, they have, if they come out to speak up on time, it could be treated. But you know, they just keep quiet and it's when it gets worse that maybe the attention of government is brought um, to their uh, situation. How do you break that culture of silence? Sensitization and education, enlightenment, through the radio, through the television, among the community leaders, advocacy, visits to uh, community leaders and what says, enlightening the parents, they are the key issues that are being used to be able to break the culture of silence. And uh, gradually, people are coming out to report cases of uh, gender-based violence, especially rape. Nigeria has the highest percentage of out-of-school children and a large number of this um, group are girls. How are we encouraging our girls to seek education? Uh, the education of the girl child is not only a problem uh, in your base state, it's a problem that cuts across the entire nation. You can see, even in Lagos, you will see the girl child hawking on the street. Any, any part of Nigeria, you will find girl child hawking on the street. The only thing is that it is more in the north where the system of education was initially perceived wrongly. But with time, and I'm telling you that if you go to our schools today in Yobe State, you will find that the girl child are more in the classroom than the boy child. The enrollment is excellent. But the only problem comes with the issue of transition. 
into higher institution. That is where the issue of a, maybe uh, a, a passing the examination or failing, that is failing the examination, uh, brings about the number of the girls that are out of school. And this can be associated with the insurgency problem. The insurgency has compounded our problems because of the fear that is being associated with the girl child while she is in school by the parents. So I think the issue of the girl child education is being tackled by the governor because he's very much committed. He's very much uh, concerned on seeing that the girl child is educated. Uh, you will find that the um, this uh, state uh, universal basic education board, they have put in some strong measures to ensure that the girl child is in school and also we from our part here in the Ministry of Women Affairs, we are partnering with the North East Development Commission to see that uh, we bring back the system of the girl child education that is informally for those that are on the street. They will come to the center. When they come to the center, they will be taught some new numeracy, illiteracy, cooking, you know, skills and other things. The, the very, very outstanding ones will be taken back to school. They will be integrated into the formal, uh, formal institutions. And this is a very uh, sure way of getting the girl child that is, has not been fully uh, educated back into the normal system of education. And that's our conversation with the Honorable Commissioner for Women Affairs in Yobe State, Hajia Hawa Ba Abubakar, telling us about all government plans and policies uh, targeted at women to improve their lot in the state. Thank you very much for your time, ma'am. Yeah, you should go with the, uh, your take home should be the governor has a policy of inclusion okay. and participation of all sections of the society. Yeah. So he has a, an inclusive policy, policy and particularly women and girls. Okay. Well, there you have it, our policy of inclusion by His Excellency to ensure that no one is left behind, especially mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. and girls. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you.